the final trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3, at least for 2018, has dropped, and it's a masterpiece. The trailer shows a lot of scenes from the final battle, so if you're a bit on the edge about seeing too much of the plot, maybe you should sit this one out. If you decide to stay, welcome aboard the pain train. We're leaving momentarily. The overall theme of this trailer seems to be despair, which is a nice change of pace from the last couple of trailers. A large part of the first half of this trailer consists of cutscenes from Disney and Pixar worlds. Most of these cutscenes are almost directly taken from their respective movies, so I'm just going to glance over those cutscenes. The first cutscene is of Master Xehanort standing on top of a rock, summoning Kingdom Hearts, much like he did in Birth by Sleep. Surrounding Xehanort are at least 8 no-name Keyblades, probably 13 if we know Nomura. We get a closer look at Kingdom Hearts and we can actually see that it's yellow, just like Simnas' version. It doesn't look too healthy as it's slowly getting covered in darkness, no doubt because of Xehanort. Speaking of the bald guy, he can be seen floating at the bottom of Kingdom Hearts. We have a short clip of Sora watching what the madman Xehanort is doing, and after that we see Aqua fall to darkness, probably as a result of the fight with Ansem we saw in the TGS trailer. During these scenes we have a voiceover provided by Sora. It goes as follows. They, they can, can take, take your world. They, they can take, take your heart. heart. Cut you loose from, from all you know. But if, if it's your fate, then every step forward will always be a step closer to home. To me, this sounds like a very end game or just very late game quote. But that might just be me. It could also be the opening quote of the game, I guess. The intro song Face My Fears begins to play as we see a number of rock pillars forming a circle. I'll let you guess how many there are. To the left we have two cloaked figures, with the one on the top being Isa or Syax. We'll get a closer look at this later in the trailer, so just remember this scene. The rock pillars serve the same purpose as the throne room in the world that never was, being some kind of gathering place for Organization 13. There are five members, Vexen, Malusia, Laxine, Demix and Luxard. Not much is happening, so let's just continue. We are in Thebes now, watching buildings get destroyed by meteors. We've seen this before a couple of times now. The chaos is highly likely caused by the titans that Hades released, mirroring the plot of the Hercules movie. The next clip is of the factory getting destroyed by explosions. I'm not too sure what is causing the destruction, but Vanitas is definitely behind. This is implied by Mike in a previous trailer. And the Unversed collected enough screams and sadness from those children. Yeah, and the whole time they were trashing our company in the process! In the Toy Box world, Buzz is swept away by some kind of dark force. Things are really not looking too hot in the different worlds. Before Buzz is carried away, notice how Andy's signature is under Buzz's foot. This is a testament to just how much detail is put into these models. After a cut we're in Rapunzel's tower where she seems to have just figured out that she's the lost princess that she's heard about in the town. Meanwhile, Sora, Donald and Goofy and Flynn are riding Maximus. This scene is probably right after Flynn's prison break where they're headed to Rapunzel's tower. Now to some scenes that aren't so depressing, the first of which is Tigger surprising Sora. Given those two's reactions, I'm going to say this is fairly early in the Hundred Acre Woods world. Switching over to Twilight Town, we see Sora with Remy on his head, talking to Scrooge. There's going to be a cooking minigame in Kingdom Hearts 3, so my guess is that Scrooge owns the restaurant Sora and Remy is going to cook in. It at least feels like to me that Scrooge is offering Remy a job, and then Remy and Sora enter a partnership. Nomura had said that Let It Go would be in Kingdom Hearts 3, but for some reason I didn't actually think they would put in the ice bridge scene, so this is a pleasant surprise. The effects look pretty good, even when comparing them to the movie. A little later Anna is about to become a winter decoration, just as in the movie. I wonder if they're going to change the true love ending to a true friendship ending, just because friendship is a little more prominent in Kingdom Hearts, not because the love version wouldn't work. In the Caribbean, Jack is still fighting David Jones for the dead man's chest, as he's been doing for the last couple of trailers. A scene cut later and Sora is jumping off of Baymax to sucker punch Dark Baymax, and then getting caught again. Baymax and Dark Baymax are then locked in a deadly embrace while tumbling to the ground. Taking a look at the close-up of Dark Baymax, we can see that even the small nanobots have the bug blocks pattern. The reflections on the blocks and on Dark Baymax look really good. If you missed the news a few days back, here it is. Stitch is returning as a Link, and he seems to pack a punch. 
The link is called Plasma Encounter, and it's a fairly apt name considering that most of the damage seemed to come from the lightning around Sora and Stitch or those weird floating planes. It's unclear whether we get to decide where the planes are located and what shape they have, or if they're fixed in place. This next scene is incredibly exciting as it confirms Riku as a playable character. I've always thought that Riku would be a very likely candidate seeing how we've played as him before in Cage 2, Recom and Dream Drop Distance. I know Kairi, Young Ericus or Young Xehanort have all been popular and very interesting choices, so some people might be a bit bummed out by the safe pick Riku. The playable segment with Riku is most likely constrained to the Realm of Darkness, where him and Mickey are going to try to rescue Aqua. If I were to guess, I'd say that Riku's segment happens sometime mid-game. At the bottom left can be seen a very normal looking command menu for Riku. The only thing missing is the link option that Sora has. The fact that Riku has a normal command menu with magic and items is very exciting. It probably means that we play as him more than just 10 minutes in a boss battle. Furthermore, in the Japanese version of this trailer, Riku is seen using shortcuts to cast thunder. At the bottom right is Riku's hut, and comparing it to Sora's, the only thing missing is the focus gauge, which makes sense as Riku can't use links. There are also no party members, which is a bit odd since Mickey and Riku were traveling together. In the small clip, Riku is fighting a demon tower that we know from 0.2. He's using his new keyblade called Braveheart. Riku also gets different situation commands than Sora, as can be seen by him using Dark Faraka. As could be expected from Dream Drop Distance, his attack and dodge roll is different from Sora's, and can only be seen in the Japanese version of the trailer. Let's now turn our attention to the next scene, where Sora is mid-keyblade transformation with a new keyblade based on the movie Ratatouille. The length of the keyblade is the Eiffel Tower, as the movie is set in France. The bottom has some wines and cock stoppers, and the top is a chef's hat with a cutout of Remy on a faucet. The keyblade transforms into a shield looking thing while Sora is put into speed form. The name of the transformation is just Frying Pan. We also get to see the finish of this transformation where the shield turns into a huge frying pan used to smack enemies. Rapunzel would be proud. Here we can see the new minigame Heartless. In previous trailers we've seen these special Heartless in the shield sliding minigame from Hercules' world and the selfie minigame from Kingdom of Corona. In this minigame it seems that you need to use the mad teacups to stack the Heartless and the bigger the Heartless, the higher the score. In the Caribbean, more specifically in Port Royal, the Heartless has to be shot using cannons. Because of how short the clip is, it's hard to tell the finer details of this minigame. The last of these Heartless minigames can be seen in San Francisco. This minigame involves jumping, but as before, it's hard to tell more at this point. While well done with the Heartless minigames, there is still the dancing minigame from Kingdom of Corona that has been shown a fair few times now. After a cut, we're still in Kingdom of Corona, but now fighting a horse chariot hybrid Heartless. The boss doesn't have that much health, so Kingdom of Corona is most likely an early game world. During the boss fight, Sora can activate something called Rage Form. The form is never activated, so we don't know what it is. Moving on, Sora is diving underwater and fights a boss. The boss has a really cool design that reminds me a bit of a lanternfish. While underwater, the shortcut button is used and some very interesting magic is revealed. All the damage dealing magic has been transformed into a water variant and we actually get to see one of them when Sora casts Blizzard. Normally Blizzard creates a projectile like fire, but underwater it creates huge ice spikes. The magic animation is pretty cool as it completely mimics how ice spreads in real life. Back to the toy box world, we see some scenery that looks like it's taken straight from the Monstropolis world. A Gigas is being used to fight some other Gigas. This is probably some kind of minigame since the top left hut keeps track of time and score. Besides the slightly odd scenery considering the world, not much of interest is going on. And here we have yet another boss fight, the second one for this world, this time against Davy Jones, who has a stupidly long HP bar. High Wind is being used for this fight, and while Sora is wailing on Davy Jones, he unlocks the situation command with Goofy. Goofy doesn't appear to be near Sora in this clip, so what exactly triggers this situation command is unknown. Next up is a really awesome looking bat tower boss. I can't see a heartless nobody or unverse symbol on the bus, but because of the design and Vanitas' presence in this world, I'd say it's an unversed. In Kingdom of Corona once again, watching Sora run up the tower to fight a bus. At the bottom of the tower we have some thorns, so maybe we have to stay off the ground as much as possible. 
It's great to see environment being utilized in a boss fight like this. The boss has a significantly larger HP bound than the last boss we saw in this world. I know Nomura has deconfirmed second visits for worlds, but that doesn't mean extra content isn't unlocked at some point in the game, like a secret boss. It could also just be that they for trailer purposes decided to give this guy some more HP. For the last gameplay clip of this trailer, we see Kingdom Hearts 3's version of the 1000 Heartless battle. Most of the enemies have shadows, but we also have Dusks, Malusia's Nobodies and that huge Heartless we've seen a lot in trailers now. Despite seeing Unversed in the XO18 trailer, none are present at this fight. If this means they have already been defeated or we have to fight a crap ton of enemies multiple times, I don't know. Unlike the fight in Kingdom Hearts 2, we don't have a counter to keep track of how many enemies have fallen, but rather a bar in the top right corner. In the fight, Sora is using the Mirage staff form to combat the enemies. That was the end of the first gameplay oriented part of the trailer, set to face my fears. The second half starts with the clip of Lee and Kairi at the place they've been training. Kairi says they're going to face off in a ring, which is probably part of the Mark of Mastery exam, like when Tyra and Aqua had to fight. Lee is zoning out so he doesn't hear her, and then she says, Don't, Don't hold, hold back, back Lee. Lee. Promise? Promise? which catches his attention and he sees slash remembers Shion because that was what she told him before he bodied her in days. Please don't hold back Axel, promise. Lee remembering Shion could be why he was crying in the TGS trailer. One thing I find odd is that in Lee's vision of Shion, she clearly has her black haired Kairi haircut, which doesn't correspond to what we know from days, that he sees Shion as Namine. Nomura has probably concocted some crazy law stuff to explain this though. This is a pre-rendered cutscene and it looks gorgeous. I love Kairi's facial animation, most of all because there is any. Lee's hair also seems to have gotten an upgrade, it's more wavy than in previous games. Over in the toy box world, Sora is chasing young Seano, trying to hit him, but isn't successful. Seano tells him to find the heart's joints to his just like Sigma did in the Square Enix E3 trailer 2018. Accept the power you're given. Find the hearts joined to yours. I guess both of them just want Sora to gather the seven lights so they can create the Keyblade. We're finally back to the scene I said we would revisit. Cyrix is talking to some hooded figure. The build is male, not too muscly and with a decent height, which excludes candidates such as Xion, Roxas and Lexius. While the eye might deceive when trying to figure out who is under the hood simply from the build, the quote from Syax is a much better to determine who it could be. He says, I would hate to think we invited you back into our ranks, only for you to fail to deliver our final vessel. From this we know it's someone who has been in the organization before and who apparently has promised to deliver a vessel. My theory is that it's Section slash Ienzo and that he promised to deliver Roxas. This would explain why he suddenly wants to help Sora with Roxas and why he seems to show remorse in the TGS trailer. A final clue pointing towards it being Section is the long sleeves that he has been shown to have. Moving on, we see Vanitas trying to goad Ventus out of Sora so they can recombine. A glimpse of Ventus can be seen. I think the model of Ventus looks a bit off, but maybe it's just a keyblade in the middle throwing me off. The scene transitions into a conversation between Pete and Maleficent, with the former asking where they are supposed to be looking for the Master of Masters box, and the latter saying a Keyblade War is about to happen. The next scene is of Charity and Sora again, and the topic is about how to restore a lost heart. This is highly likely about how to awaken Ventus, but it could also be about his friends getting absolutely destroyed a little later in the trailer. Here we see Lee and Syx talking. Lee is holding a second ice cream, meaning he's waiting for someone, but not Syx, as can be seen in the TGS trailer when Lee is surprised by him. I don't know what to make of this conversation. It could mean that Syx maybe turns to the light, but how would that even be possible when he's already a Xehanort vessel? Just a short clip with Mickey that doesn't seem important. Let's carry on. This is the first time we see Anthem the Wise's full face in a trailer. This man is a complete wildcard. I have no idea what his role in this game is going to be, but I'm glad he's back. He's in front of the mansion in Twilight Town, talking to Ansem Seeker of Darkness. The conversation is kind of weird, as one of the main villains seemed to blame one of the good guys for morally abhorrent behavior. Transitioning from one scene of Ansem to another, Riku is in the middle of duking it out with one of his alternate selves. 
My bed is on Riku replica. What has me scratching my head is that Riku left his way to the dawn for his other self, but right here the alternate Riku is using Soul Eater. Anyway, for some reason Ansem is watching these two kids beat each other up. I have no explanation. Another scene with young Xehanort, this time with him warning Sora of using his powers without thought. I'm really digging Xehanort's model here, it looks on point, and the delivery of his lines are damn near perfect as well. Back on the Keyblade graveyard, some cool scenes of the Destiny Islands tree fighting an endless amount of Heartless is shown, and then we cut to the alternate Riku unleashing a Heartless looking thing that reminds me of Ansem's Guardian. The Heartless has the shape of Master Xehanort. In general, the light seems to be in a bit of a pickle right here. At another place and another time, Lee is having problems as well. He's facing a hooded figure wielding the kingdom key. There's no way this isn't Xi'an. Only Sora, Riku, Roxas and Xi'an have used the kingdom key. And the hooded figure has a feminine form, leaving only Xi'an as the possible candidate. Lee is also asking who she is, like some kind of fan service joke. Behind Xi'an, Semnes is watching. The next clip is still of Lee and Semnes, but Xi'an has been replaced by Sayak in his berserk mode. Simnas does his nasty laser move and Lee is forgetting to press triangle, so he's getting completely destroyed. What I think happens is that first Lee has fight with Saiyax and then he gets destroyed by the laser move falling to his knees. After this, Xi'an appears and we have the previous clip. Moving on again, we see change constraining Sora and Ventus. It's a bit hard to discern if Ventus is awake and moving or if it's just a pull of the chain making it look that way. This is our first time seeing Ventus out of Castle Oblivion. Looking at the pattern of the chains, we can see they belong to Terra or Terra Nord, and not Aqua. Mickey is having a rough time fighting against Luxot, which is a bit disappointing given that Mickey is a Keyblade Master and Luxot doesn't seem to be all too powerful. Now to the scene that broke my heart when I watched it. Donald getting annihilated by a huge laser. Just look at that sad duck face. Thanks Nomura, I didn't need my heart anyway. I'm pretty sure that Donald is going to pull a goofy, but that scene still shook me. Even more than the reveal of a nod at Aqua. The scene changes and we see Kyrie, Lee, Donald, Goofy and Mickey getting swept away by a demon tide. One interesting thing to note is that Kyrie is trying to protect Lee and when she does, she calls him Axel instead of Lee. Maybe they're all just going to call him Axel by the end of the game, for convenience, but it's still a bit weird when she earlier in the trailer called him Lee. The demon tide tries to come for Sora and Riku, but luckily for Sora, Riku is a champ and completely blocks the attack, while Sora is on his knees for some reason. While Riku is taking the full force of the attack, we get a close up and a voiceover from him, which gives me this terrible feeling that he isn't going to survive this war. Right after the attack, we hear Sora letting out a horrible scream that is gonna haunt my dreams for months. <coughs> if this scream is what puts Sora on his knees during the attack we just saw or comes after, maybe as a result of Riku dying, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm fearing the latter is true. It would certainly fit in with the scene of Sora and Kyrie sitting alone on Destiny Islands that we saw in the TGS trailer. Let's hope that's not the case. The trailer appears to end here, but Square Enix is pulling a marvel and leaving us with a very cool end credit scene. Cable Town has finally been revealed, and it's absolutely massive. Apparently its real name is Scala at Kylum, which is Latin for Ladder to Heaven, or Stairway to Heaven. Xehanort explains that this was the seat of power for all Keyblade wielders. Talking about Xehanort, he has brought his 12 vessels to this town and dressed them up in some very funky clothes. His intention is to merge with them to some unknown end, probably to wield the Keyblade. I'm really hoping that this world is going to be explorable, and not just a tiny corner of it. It seems to be the final world, so it would be awesome if we just had a huge original world to explore. Anyway, that's all I have for this time, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>